What's up there YouTube? Alright guys, here's a follow-up video on wiring the VSIM. I'm going to show you how to plug all these in, how to route them, and what the functions of them are, and so let's get started. Okay, so here you can see guys, I already got the green one plugged in. It goes green, brown, black. The blue at the top and this gray at the bottom are already in there from the factory. So you want to have the green one at the top, brown one below that, and then the black one. You want to put them in until you hear the audible click of the tab clicking in so you know that it's secure. Okay, let me see if I can... I've got my flashlight in the way here so you guys can see, but let me see if I can get one in here so you can hear what it sounds like when it clicks in. Put this last black one in down here. Apologize for the videotape, it's uh, really tight in here. Okay, so I got it in there. Let's push, listen. Okay, that was not it. <laughs> there you go. Hear that click? Okay. So now, next is the gray plug that comes in your kit. It has the purple, two reds, and two pink wires. And look at that. This one. They were nice enough to leave out for us. Let me see if I can get back so you can kind of see where it is. So here's my here's my pedals. Okay, so up in here is our steering shaft. Okay, here's the the plugs that we just put in up in there. And this gray plug, the next one we're going to is this guy right here. Now. This one's really nice. We're fortunate that it's hanging out here, but you see this little clip on the top here? It's usually stuffed way back up in here. Way up in there. And zip tied to another wire, so you can't even get to it. And it's a pain in the ass to get up in there and try to cut the zip tie that's holding it to one of these harnesses and bring it back down. But this one, is we're fortunate that it's hanging out. Let me see if I can get up in there to show you normally it's way up in there what? so we'll take our let's see what here is that plug. Here we go, this guy right here so this is the one we're looking for right here okay so what you want to do so you ever plan on using this for any other accessories on your truck, you want to just put some connectors on here. Combine the two red, combine the two pinks. This is if you're getting a PTO, I'll show you how to use this later for a clutch pump. So we can have our, we use it as a pass through wire to send signal from the engine compartment into the cab for another function we're going to use. So this is basically a constant hot from this plug. And this is an ignition. So that's why we just combine them, because they're in a loop. We combine them, we're going to wire off to them later. I'll show you guys that a little bit later. But right now we're going to plug this in. Okay. So now we've got that plugged in. And I will run these wires on the back side of all of this um, and tuck them back here and then I will tuck all these wires coming out of the harness right here I'll tuck them all up above behind the paneling here so they're not in the way of your feet or the pedals and we'll tuck them up out of the way and we're gonna run all of this together in a nice bundle across here over to our center console here. Let's get the flashlight here. So we'll run them all up underneath here over to our center console and then down. We took the cover, took this, bear with me, we took this cover here off of this center console here. So just pop this out, 
It's just got little plastic tabs in it. So just pop that out of there. Get that out of your way. So now we're going to run this harness down in through here along with this factory harness here. We'll bring it down through here. We're actually going to take this nut off and we'll use this as a ground post. So we'll put a star washer on here, we'll ground to this, run all our wires down here. We can bundle them all up in here when we're done. You can see they leave you a nice cavity in here. So we'll stuff them all in there when we're done. But I'll show you how to wire all the relays on for our clutch pump and all the VSIM functions that go with it. All right guys, so we got our wires ran over here. I like to throw some electrical tape on them to get them kind of bundled up. So I'll show you. We're running this harness over here. So you can see we ran it up under here. It's running over. Got it all tied together right here. So now we're just gonna fasten it up in there, zip tie it up in there, hold it over here. We'll run it down right there from out underneath the dash, like we said. And we'll cluster it up over here. And I'll wire onto these to lengthen them where we need so we can tie the ends of some of these wires into our relays and that whole configuration, which I'll show in the next video in, in, the, in a minute. Okay guys, so we're gonna remove the 10 millimeter nut off of here. We're gonna attach our ground to here to run over with the rest of our VSIM cables. Now you always wanna use a star washer like this on a ground. Cause this'll bite into your eyelet, this'll bite into your mounting surface. Okay, so you always want this against the surface, against your eyelet. And then we'll reassemble this. Okay. Uh, it is just a 10 millimeter bolt, 10 millimeter nut. Don't over tighten it. <laughs> so now. We're gonna get this harness. We're gonna get this harness tucked up in there, have it running down, running with our ground, and I'll show you how that is, and we'll get it all nice and clean looking, ran over to the other side, and then we'll go from there. Okay guys, so here it is. This is what we're looking for. Okay, so you got your ground on there. Let me see if I can adjust my light here. It's really horrible lighting here, guys. I apologize. Okay, so you got your ground on here. You got your ground, the white wire, always white, running over there. You got your cluster coming down from underneath here with your factory harness that's ran in here. So all this you just zip tied to here, ran over under here. So this will all fit under that plastic cover that pops back on over all this. So you won't see any of this. This will all fit under there. Let me get up under here. Sorry guys, apologize for the light again. Let me move my light. Okay. So see we're running up here. We run up in here. There's a tide all up in here. That's what you want right there. Okay. That's what you want right there. So now we're going to go over to the other side and we're going to put our relay, our two relays on and start wiring a little bit. And I'll show you guys that in a second. Okay, so one other thing that I failed to mention was where we had the gray plug with our two ignitions, our two constant hots and our pass-through purple wire. Now, if you're putting a transmission-mounted PTO 
on the truck. This purple pass-through wire is actually a pressure signal wire. So, but we're going to use it as a pass-through because we're putting a clutch pump on this vehicle. So, this is actually going to take our hot signal from the switch when it activates the clutch pump under the hood. We'll run a wire back from it to the pass-through wire under the hood and then that signal will actually transfer through into the cab onto this wire. So now when our clutch pump is activated, this pass-through wire will become hot. And so what I did was I made this right here coiled up. I just chucked three wires up in my drill, twisted them together to make this harness right here. So I got my green going to, and I always use green, red, and yellow. So our red is for our constant hot from that gray plug harness. The yellow will be our ignition to the two pinks. And our green will be our pressure or pass through wire on the purple. And so those will come all the way down with our ground all the way to the end where we have this entire bundle that we're going to work with and wire onto our relays. Now let me show you the pass through wire. The clutch pump is not yet installed on this truck. But, the, this top plug is for your auxiliary switches, and this bottom plug is for your PTO. So this one, with your factory PTO switch, is your hot. This is our pass-through wire. We connect them together, so when our PTO switch, our factory PTO switch is activated to activate our clutch pump, it at the same time sends its signal back through this pass-through wire into the cab. Okay guys, I thought I'd give you the actual from Dodge. So you guys can get some technical documentation on these plugs. Or you can go to rambodybuilder.com and you can download and print these out yourself. Rambodybuilder.com Okay guys, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our ground wire and before it goes to our relays, we're going to splice onto it, somewhere up it a little bit so that we can still have it running to our relays to make our relays function. We're actually going to, from the green harness, you can see this VSIM 16 cavity green connector, it's for the rear bulb out detection off, so if you're planning on putting LEDs on this truck if you do not ground the signal wire from this plug the white brown wire it will tell you on your VSIM that your rear tail lights are out all the time it does not automatically detect for LEDs if you're it comes with incandescence I know this is 2018 2019 and we're still running incandescence don't understand it myself but if you put LEDs on here without doing this, it will tell you that your rear tail lights are burnt out. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take our white brown from our green connector here. So we're going to find the white brown in here. And we are going to connect this to the ground. And then we will continue the ground past this to where we're going to use it for our relays. So let me hook that up and then I'll come back. Okay guys, so we got the white brown from our green harness connected to our ground here. We have the ground continuing out of it to go to our relays still for our other functions. Now this is for your rear bulb detection on the green harness, the green plug, white brown wire. You wanna ground this. Now you wanna ground this before you unplug your incandescence from the rear. If you hook up LEDs in the rear before grounding this, even once you ground this, it will tell you your rear lights are still out. And then you'll have to go through the process of ungrounding this, putting your incandescence on the tail lights again, then turn the vehicle on, cycle it, it'll say they're no longer out, then come back to grounding this wire, and then you can take your incandescence out of the rear and put LEDs on it. But if you, if you don't ground this, 
before putting LEDs on the rear, it will constantly tell you that the rear lights are still out. So you need to go back and hook up your incandescence again, then ground this, then take your incandescence off and put your LEDs on. All right, hey, what's going on, guys? So we got our relays hooked up. We got everything hooked up here. Now, I'm sorry I couldn't do it. Couldn't do it on video um, for you guys. I don't have a tripod. Uh, it's kind of some of my first videos. Um, I did upgrade my light, however, so we get some better lighting here. I got my uh, blue point under the dash, or under the hood. Actually, it works here on the cab too. A little telescoping, grabbing hook here. It's got some nice rubber on it. it doesn't mar things up. It was just like some dust left on there from it. But, uh, yeah, I picked this up from Snap-on. It's the corded one, a little cheaper. <laughs> Blue point. Um, if you guys want, uh, just message me, comment below um, if you would like the part number on this light. Uh, a lot of guys ask me about this light. Um, you know, Snap-on, uh, they couldn't find it in their inventory the other day. We had to look it up by the part number, and then he was able to finally find it. So if you guys are interested, it's actually LED inside this. It's just plastic. This isn't actually a bulb. So. And it unclips out of here. You can kind of take it under the truck, whatnot. It's, it's pretty solid. It's a, it's a pretty good purchase there. I'm very happy with it. But so where we left off was grounding for our rear bulb detection. So now we've got our harness coming over here with our pass-through signal from our clutch pump. These I just capped off, so we have for later if we want to wire in like a flashlight in the cab or any other accessories, a CB, a uh, scanner, anything. So we got a constant hot and an ignition here. And uh, then we can go back up to our ground if we want to. We'll wire on to that later. Um, so we took, we have these two relays in here. I drew a little diagram for you guys to help you out. So this is basically how it works right here. So you'll have your ground coming in, our main ground, splits off and runs to the ground here on this post of the relay to activate the coil. And then what we're going to switch with the, coil, with the coil in the relay is we're going to switch a ground away from a constant ground. So right now on the center post, this ground that's being used by the other relay is constant until this relay is activated and it'll switch the ground away from the constant post, taking the ground completely away from this relay. So to activate this, what the function we have coming in is the light green wire from our black harness here. Now this is actually our, refer back to the Dodge VSIM paperwork here, this is actually a howler siren disable, so it's an open circuit when vehicle speed is below 25 miles an hour. So when the vehicle is below 25 miles an hour, there's no current, there's nothing on this signal, it doesn't do anything. But once the vehicle speed is 25 miles an hour or above, it supplies this wire with a positive signal. Which in turn, so this is what we're going to use to turn our clutch pump off. If a driver is to accidentally leave his clutch pump on, as soon as he travels at 25 miles an hour or over, it will activate the coil in our relay and it will take, let's go back to our relay here. So this is our signal on the relay coming in. This is our howler signal. So when the vehicle is over 25 miles an hour, it will send a positive to this, actuating the coil, which will switch our ground coming in, our main ground, it will switch our ground away from the ground supplying the other relay so that this relay is no longer grounded. Now this, the reason for that is this, is our orange brown from our orange or brown plug our, our brown plug it's an orange brown wire and the orange brown wire is our PTO pressure s signal if this wire is not grounded our PTO will switch off 
it will detect that there's a fault, a problem, and it will switch off. So the, the VSIM will cut power to our switch. The LED on the switch will turn off, the switch will turn off, and within, uh, I think it's within 30 seconds of detecting a fault, the switch will deactivate and it'll turn your system off. So we want this to turn off if the vehicle travels 25 miles an hour or over. So where you, that's where the other relay comes in with our howler, howler siren because it supplies the signal for 25 miles an hour or over. So it will then activate this relay which is set up to take the ground that supplies the, our PTO switch. It will activate and take the ground away from this signal which will turn the switch off. So we have this green wire that's from our purple pass-through wire. This is hot when our clutch pumps, when our switch is on, when we turn the clutch pump on, this activates, which will activate this coil to send the ground to our PTO switch VSIM signal. Therefore, the switch will stay on. But as soon as this reaches 25 miles an hour or over, it will activate this coil taking this ground away. So it will then kill the switch. So that's how you do it there. That's that's pretty much it. The, the gray is used for other things. We're not going to cover that right now. It's not, not concerned about that. So it's from our black. It's our light green. From the brown plug, it's our orange brown. I'll refer back to the diagram if you guys want to see that again. Just send me any, any comments or questions you guys may have. I'll be happy to help. So that's it, guys. All right, guys, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to coil this up and stick it back in that cubby like I showed you earlier. I'm going to do this one-handed. <laughs> Usually it's a little more graceful than this, I apologize. I will be getting a tripod soon. Bear with me. Alright guys, so there you go. I kind of had to do another take there. <laughs> Put the camera down for a second and get two hands on it. But as you can see, I just kind of stuffed it in there loosely. I got my ignition and ground, or ignition and hot hanging out there. Uh, the ground's still exposed, you know, on our post over here. So there you go. If you ever want to wire onto it again, too, we're just going to slap this cover back over it now, and we'll be done. Good to go. All right. Well, there you go, guys. So. Again, I had to do another take, put the camera down, wrestle it with two hands. Uh, sometimes, you know, you got a little bit of some wires clustered up under here, so you might have to get two hands on it, kind of tuck it back down in there uh, to get this cover to sit nice and flush on there again. Um, but as you can see, we got it back on there. No big deal. Um, so uh, hit that subscribe button, like if you guys like the video. Um, I apologize for the poor lighting and uh, no tripod and the camera wrestling but uh, hopefully if I get enough subscribers and uh, enough likes and enough viewers uh, definitely gonna upgrade my equipment here and bring you guys some better videos so hit that subscribe and that like button thanks guys